Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we have another knitting basic tutorial for you and that is how to two color brioche. So two color brioche has become increasingly popular over the past couple years because it provides a really lofty and dense stitch um, and it has some really beautiful visual interest. So you'll see on one side, the pink is the prominent color, but if you flip it to the reverse, the white is the prominent color. So again, it's very, very similar to rib stitching the appearance of it, but you use two different colors to create this multi-dimensional fabric. So you only need a couple materials to get started. Firstly, you need, of course, two colors of yarn. We're using Madras today, which is an air and weight cotton. And of course, you need a set of needles. So today I'm using round needles for Brioche knitting in the flat, you do need either round needles or DP ends. So anything with a little stopper on the end is not going to work for this tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to do to get started is cast on an even number of stitches. For this tutorial, I'm going to cast on 14 stitches. However, go ahead and cast on however many you like. And again, I'm gonna use the long tail cast on method, but this is really up to you, depending on what your preference is. So once you cast on your stitches, go ahead and double count that you have an even number. And once you verify that, you are ready to start. Fourteen, okay. So the brioche stitch is a culmination of four row repeats. So the way the order is gonna go is you're gonna start on a knit row, then you're gonna do a purl row, a second purl row, and then finish on a knit row. It's really important that you follow that order because if you don't, you'll end up reversing your work so it'll look like, it'll look like what knit stitches are ex if, except for their slip stitches, um, and then it'll turn into the reverse so it'll go into purl stitches. So it's really important that you write that down, especially if you're new to brioche knitting. Just grab any scrap piece of paper and write KPPK so you can tick which row that you're on as you go along. That's what I did when I first started and it really, really helped me. So for the first row, what we're going to do is we are going to knit our first stitch and then we're going to knit the second stitch. We're gonna bring our yarn to the front, slip one stitch purl wise, then without moving our yarn, so it's still in the front, we're just going to knit the next stitch. Then you're gonna bring your yarn back to the front, slip the next stitch, without moving your yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. So essentially what that does is it creates a yarn over in your work so you have a double stitch and a single stitch followed behind it. So you slip one, keep your yarn in the front, and knit one. Slip one, keep your yarn in the front, and knit one. So you're gonna do this all the way to the end of the row, and then you should be ending on a knit stitch. So if you're ending on a slip stitch, something went wrong, or you don't have the right number of cast on stitches. So that's it, that's it for row number one. And now it's time to introduce our second color. So what we're going to do is we're gonna slide our work all the way down our needles, back to the side with the end of your cast on. So now we're gonna work on row number two, which is a purl row but we're going to work with our second color of yarn. Okay. So again, to start this row, 
we are going to start with another knit stitch. So go ahead and insert your needle and grab your second color yarn and just add it in the way you would on any other project, creating a knit stitch. So after we knit that first stitch, we're gonna bring our yarn to the front and slip one stitch purlwise. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap our yarn around counterclockwise, counterclockwise around the needle. So we just essentially created a yarn over. Then you should have two stitches that are kind of crossing over together. You're going to purl those two together. So again, this is the single stitch. What you're gonna do is you're gonna slip that stitch over to your right needle, create a yarn over, and then purl the next two stitches together. So for all of the single stitches in this pattern, you're just gonna be slipping them with the yarn in the front purlwise. So slip, yarn over, purl two together. 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 So then when you're on your last stitch, what you're gonna do is bring your yarn to the back and then just knit a regular stitch. And there you are. So because both of our working yarns are now on the same side, we can just turn our work and take a look. So I know we're on row number three now. So I'm just gonna tuck the yarn that we just used over to my left side just to keep it out of the way. I try and keep it as organized as possible so I don't get a huge tangle in my yarns. But I'll give you also some tips while you're mid project. Let's say you just walked away from your project and came back. Um, the first thing that you're gonna do is determine what yarn you used last. So you can see all of the standalone stitches in this row are white and there are a lot less pink strands in the last row that we worked. So that means we used the white yarn last. So it's time to use the pink yarn. And the second thing that you're gonna look for is, am I on a knit row or am I on a purl row? So the easiest way to determine that is to look at your first two stitches here. And if they're single stitches, not the double like you can see here, you know you're on a purl row. Whereas you can see on this side, if we were working from this way, we would have a single stitch and a double stitch. That would be an indicator we're on a knit row. So we're essentially just going to repeat the last row that we just worked, which goes, knit the first stitch, bring the yarn to the front and slip the next stitch, yarn over, purl two together. So slip the next stitch purl wise, yarn over, purl two together. Slip the next stitch, yarn over, purl two together. Slip the next, yarn over, purl two together. You just keep working this way until you get to the end of your row. And then you should be ending on a knit stitch. So remember for the knit stitch, the last knit stitch at the end of the row, you can bring your yarn to the back, only on the purl rows. You keep it in the front on the knit rows. So you can go ahead, pull out your work, see how you're looking. And then when you finish that, you're going to slide your work all the way back to the other side of your needles again because we can never turn our work unless both strands of yarn are on the same side. 
<clears throat> so again, what you're gonna do is determine whether you're on a knit row and a purl row or a purl row. So the way you do that is you see this is a single stitch, but this one is a double stitch right here. So you know that you're back on a knit row. So to finish out the knit row, what you do is knit the first stitch, then you're gonna knit two together. You're gonna bring your yarn to the front, slip that stitch purlwise, and knit the next two together. Bring your yarn to the front, slip purlwise, knit the next two together. Bring your yarn to the front, slip purlwise, knit two together. Yarn to the front, slip, knit two together. I think the biggest thing with the knit rows is to make sure you keep your yarn in the front whenever you're knitting two together. That is definitely the most important part of it because if you bring your yarn to the back, then you will not create those yarn overs that we need to knit the two together or purl the two together. So now that our working yarns are back on the same side, we are ready to work and just turn our work. So again, we just worked with the white yarn, so I'm just gonna tuck it over to the left side to keep it all kind of nice and neat. And we are back for row number five. So that means we're going to repeat row number one or the last row that we just worked for a knit row. Because it goes knit, purl, purl, knit. Then it goes back to knit, purl, purl, knit. That's why it's super helpful if you guys write it down. It's really, really easy to mistake which row you're on, but I swear, as long as you look at the first two stitches, you know if this is crossed over um, and this one is just a regular knit stitch, you're gonna be on a knit row. So one more time, I will show you guys what that looks like. So you knit, knit two together, bring your yarn to the front, slip, knit two together, yarn to the front, slip, knit two together. This stitch can be pretty frustrating if you are brand new to, to brioche, but just have some patience, give it a little bit of time. You're probably going to mess up your first swatch or two, just because it can seem like a lot of things to remember, especially if you are new to knitting. But I promise you, you will get it if you just keep watching these steps and repeating to yourself exactly what you need to do. So that's really it, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked this tutorial and want to take on a brioche knitting project, we do have a free pattern uh, coming out for July of 2020, the Angelina top. This is a really beautiful two color brioche tank top that doesn't really take much yardage and it's so fun to wear. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you leave a like and comment down below and subscribe to our channel for more content. See you next time.